In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use GIS to narrow down our data set. Quite often we start with a data set that's too large, has too many observations, for example, census tracts for the entire United States, when in fact you're only interested in census tracts for a particular urban area. Or another example might be you're interested in counties, but not counties for the entire United States, just counties for a particular state. So I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and use GIS to narrow down our initial data set. I'll go ahead and start by adding data. If you click on the large plus sign here, and you'll navigate to wherever your data is. So let's start with counties. I'll add in counties. So you have a, a map of counties of the United States, but you're only interested in counties in Colorado. So how would you go about getting just those counties and getting rid of all the others? Narrowing down your data set. There's a couple of easy ways to do this. Um, and this case, the first thing we can do is just zoom in on the Colorado area. And if I click on this Identify button, on any one of these counties in Colorado, if I click on it, we'll get some information about that particular county population and so on. But at the bottom, we'll also see that there's this state FIPS, which is a, an identifying code for, in this case, the state of Colorado is 08. Um, other states will have different FIPS codes and so on. So if I keep 08 in mind, I can use that. So what I can do is use the selection menu to select things by their attributes. So in this case, I want to select counties. It's the only piece of data I have in my layer window. I want to select counties where um, state FIPS, and I'll just double click on that to bring it into my options here, equals, and then it is single quotes 08, single quote and hit OK. So I've highlighted all of the counties in Colorado. And if I right click on counties and open up the attribute table, you know, while you're seeing a map of counties in the United States, behind the scenes this is the data set that actually exists. Uh, each row is a county in the United States and you'll see that some of these were highlighted. These are the counties that are in Colorado. And I've highlighted that data. So what I want to do is I'll peel that data out of the larger county data layer. So I've highlighted counties, I'll go over to counties, right click, data, and export that data. And I'll save it as COCNTIES for Colorado counties. Notice I keep things short, sweet, no spaces, no symbols. And I'll hit OK. And export that to the map as a layer. I'll hit yes. And I can get rid of counties. And there I've gone from too much data, too many counties in the world, in the country, down to the counties I was interested in using that um, identifying information. Now let's say there's another way of doing that, which is what I call the cookie cutter method. So I'll bring back counties in. And this time I'll bring back in uh, another layer for states. You can see states get overlaid, they're on top, and if I want to switch the order, I can click and drag and move these things around over here. And you always have to make sure you're in this particular tab. Um, what I can do is create a cookie cutter of Colorado. So I'll unclick counties. What I'll do is I'll highlight the state of Colorado. And again, if I open up the attribute table, there's my one row of data that's been highlighted for Colorado. And what I can do is I can peel that bit of data out and save it as its own shape file. Okay, and then that'll serve as a cookie cutter later on. So I've highlighted a state, I'll peel it out of states. It's a very simple rule. States, states. Right click on states, data, and export that data. And I'll call this, uh, where's my backslash key? I'll call it CO state. And go ahead and add it, and I can get rid of the states layer now that I have my cookie cutter. I'll recheck my county so they're in there. Now, I can use a different selection method. Instead of select by attributes, because I knew the identified number of Colorado. In this case, I can use select by location. So I'm going to select features from the larger counties layer counties that, in this case, have their center in, so the last option here, have their center in the state of Colorado, my cookie cutter that I created. Okay. So make sure this makes sense. You're selecting elements from the larger counties file that have their center in whatever shapefile you created as a sort of a template. Okay. 
So select features from counties that have their center in the state of Colorado that you created and hit OK. And there again, it highlighted all of the counties in Colorado um, that it wanted. I could go and then right click on counties and data, export that data and save them out as their own shape file. So that's more of the cookie cutter method. Those are the two different ways of selecting um, the data you want for a particular project. For the project I want to show you in this set of tutorials, we're going to want to look at census tracts in a particular urban area, in this case the Denver Aurora urban area. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new map here. And we'll start by adding in some data. Now if you think about it, we want census tracts in a particular urban area. So the first thing you might want to do is figure out that one of the stepping stones is to create a uh, cookie cutter of the urban area you're interested in. So I'm going to add in the urban boundaries. There's the larger data layer for the entire United States and each of these areas is deemed sort of integrated by the Census Bureau. And I zoomed in on the Denver area and if I want to see which ones I'm looking at I just right click and I can label features. So you can see Denver, Colorado Springs, Castle Rock and so on. So there's our urban areas, and I want to create a cookie cutter of just the Denver Aurora area. So what I'll do is I'll s click on the Select Features pointer over here, the one with the turquoise background, and click on Denver Aurora. And if I wanted to add these others, I could hold down the Shift key and select some of those as well, but I'll um, leave those unchecked for now. But that's how you would add additional observations or cases to this particular um, shapefile we're creating. So I've highlighted one row of data. And again, if I opened up the attribute table and very carefully scrolled, we might actually find which one has been highlighted. Um, so we've highlighted our data, and now I want to peel this bit of data out and save it as its own shapefile that I can then use as a cookie cutter later. So I've highlighted an urban area. I'm going to peel it out of the larger urban layer. Data, export data and name it something short and sweet. I'll call it Den Herb. And I already have one that exists, but I'll overwrite it and add it to the map as a layer. And I can get rid of the old larger urban layer file, just remove it, right click and remove. So there I have a cookie cutter and I can use that to select census tracts in and around the Denver Aurora urban area. So what I need to do is go back in and add data. We'll add tracks this time. Now obviously tracks, because they're on top, are on top of the Denver Aurora urban area. If I uncheck them, you can see that the urban area is still there. Or if I hold and drag up, we can reorder these things. But now we can use this cookie cutter to select tracks that are in and around the Denver Aurora urban area. So instead of using the selection pointer, I'll use the selection menu, and we're going to use select by location. Okay. So we're going to select features from tracks, the larger tracks file for the United States, that either have uh, their centroid in, their center in, or one of the other options is intersect with. And this will select all those census tracks that are inside of or bordering our particular area. So I'm going to go ahead and use intersect and hit OK. So you can see that we've got all the census tracts inside of and some of that are just kind of bordering the area. Um, if you want to sort of fine-tune this a little bit, just hold down the Shift key while you're on the Select pointer and you can deselect some of these outlying um, census tracts. And we'll stop with something that looks like that. So, again, imagine if I opened up the attribute table. If I were to scroll down through this rather slowly, because again, it's you know 30,000 plus census tracts in the United States, we would find some of these rows highlighted just as they are on the map. And so we've highlighted this data. We want to export this data, peel it out, and save it as its own shape file. So we just go back over. We've highlighted tracks. We peel out of tracks. It's a very simple rule. Tracks, tracks. Right click, data, export data. 
and we'll call this then tracks. It already exists, but I'll overwrite it. And we'll add it in, and we can get rid of the old ingredients. And I can even get rid of the cookie cutter I created to get there, the Denver herb. I don't need that any longer. It's still in my file, but I was just using it. So that's how we can use GIS to get down to just the census tracks we're interested in.